Kyle Sondland and Herbert Konings are founding partners for Security Token Group. All opinions expressed by them or guests on this podcast are solely their opinions and do not represent the views of Security Token Group or its subsidiaries. You should not take any opinion expressed on the show as a specific inducement to make a particular investment or follow any investment strategy. This podcast is for informational purposes only. Hello and welcome back to this week's episode of the Security Token Show. You already know our faces. I'm Kyle Sondland, joined with my co-host Herwig Konings. But of course, you can see now we've expanded the team to cover the aggressively growing security token market. We're joined here by John Pittman, Jessica Burns, and Keith D. Smith III, and we cannot wait to break into this week's episode. Let's dig right into it. So before we dig into this episode, I do want to mention that this episode of the Security Token Show is sponsored by TurnCoin. TurnCoin is the revenue share tokenization of the exchange, which is a platform launching digital trading cards called Virtual Stacks for anyone, celebrities, actors, athletes, even potentially anyone influential, including yourself, can issue Virtual Stacks trading cards for the world to buy. Just like in the traditional markets, trading cards and NFTs are hot right now, and they're creating a platform to be able to do that. And in exchange, investors are buying into the revenue that the company will generate, both through issuing these cards on a primary offering as well as on the secondary market. So check out TurnCoin as they're tokenizing the revenue in the company. You can find out more at TurnCoin.com. Thank you, as always, to our spouse for making this show possible. But now, let's get into our Companies of the Week, Kyle. This is where we choose every episode, a company, each of us, that we thought was making the biggest moves in the space. So, Kyle, for episode 104, who did you pick? My Company of the Week this week is follows a fantastic and very promising trend that we've seen over the last couple of years, and that is that we're seeing broker-dealers are finally being approved for ATS licenses. And this week, I'm talking about Prometheum, which is a broker-dealer. Their subsidiary, Pete's, P-E-A-T-S, has been approved for an ATS to trade digital securities. They are providing accredited and non-accredited individuals access to trade under the three-step process for ATSs, which was approved by the SEC, or at least given a no-action letter to be able to custody and provide trading for digital securities. And this is just fantastic. They're going to be leveraging on-chain settlement and custody from Anchorage for this process. And a huge congratulations to the Pete's platform for successfully getting approved to launch an ATS. Gotta love it. Gotta love it. Just, you know, if you're following along very early on, we were complaining about the fact that the SEC and FINRA were not really approving ATS licenses, but clearly that is changing. Congratulations to Prometheum. And actually, Kyle, my company of the week is on a similar foot, oh. but from a different regulator, I'm going to head over to Singapore, which I think at this point is the hottest, excuse me, the hottest area for security tokens. And why? Because they now have the most approved exchanges and marketplace participants. The latest one being Fraxtor. So Fraxtor has been approved by the NAS, the Monetary Authority of Singapore, for a capital market services license, enabling them to provide tokenization of real estate offerings to the market. And get this, Kyle, they had actually already done a $43.8 million deal in a test environment for 21 Mount Rosie, and it sold out in 90 minutes. Wow. 90 minutes, folks. So clearly they need this license to crank up the tokenization. And for that reason, Braxter is my company of the week. Security tokens are a global opportunity. Companies around the world are getting involved in this space. And just two of our companies of the week here covering the globe. Fantastic. We're just getting started. And with that, let's get into our top five. And moving into article number one in our top five news segment, it's the security token trading market. We've seen real estate hitting $31, $32 million, according to Security Token Market's newest real estate report. And the market as a whole is around $950 million. This is a huge milestone. We're we're talking $59 million to start 2020. We're talking $360 million to start 2021. And we're almost at a billion dollars in market cap now, just halfway through the year, all fantastic stuff in the trading market. Setting personal records everywhere. This trend is not going to stop. I don't think so, especially based on number two, where we saw a new platform by Neofin, Cashlink, and Tangi launch, supposedly all in tandem to do custody, issuance, all by Q4, focusing on renewable energies and other tokenization options. 
look out for Q4 when they're going to launch their platform. We definitely cannot wait for that. Absolutely. And then to number three, we've covered the South Korea Central Bank Digital Currency many times here on the show. And we've got a new update to that. And that is that Samsung, one of the largest companies in Singapore, has announced that they are going to be working with the bank and its partners to integrate with this CBDC. Not only are they going to be testing the usability of blockchain-based payment systems on their Galaxy models of smartphones, which is the iPhone version for Samsung, they also are going to be launching launching payments via mobile phones using digital currency without internet access and to phones outside of the Samsung ecosystem. This is what interoperability is all about and you just it's fantastic news. It's, it's a big deal. It's a giant private-public partnership right there leveraging some of the greatest technology to come out of Korea there. And of course now all eyes are on the Bank of Korea as this quickly is becoming one of the most interesting CBDC experiments in the world. And certainly the most public. Absolutely. Number Four, DBS out of Singapore actually announcing a hundred million over a hundred million dollars in deposits just this quarter I believe mm -hmm. uh, and that's actually in a combination of, of crypto but also tokenized stocks and bonds. So there's clearly demand for that, and we think that there's gonna only again keep setting records. On top of that, not only has this business been so successful, but they're now exploring to expand trading hours past Singapore business days. 24-7 markets are coming, everyone, and that's where security tokens thrive. Now, number five is not so much fun. It's the SEC getting busy again, this time. Coming to a conclusion here with DMM, DeFi Money Markets, and that's a big deal. It made our top five because this is the first instance of the SEC going after a DeFi platform. Now, in this case, the executives actually are, are required to pay $125,000 in fines each and return up to $12 million of their $30 million offering while ceasing operations, which they have done. Apparently, they were selling unregistered securities and both sides have agreed to the settlement. And that's it for the top five. Let's get to Jessica for industry news. Starting up this week for security token news, we head over to the country of Ghana, where its central bank has announced that they will start trialing a central bank digital currency. Clearly, per our earlier announcement with the Bank of Korea using Samsung phones to support CBDCS, this digital money trend is not going to stop. In the case for Ghana, it will be done in partnership with German banknote and security printing company called, excuse my pronunciation, Plexi Endeavorant, or GD. GD is using their CBDC solution known as Fila to pilot the issuance of a digital form of Ghana's national currency called SETI. The digital currency will be tested in a trial with local banks, merchants, payment service providers, and consumers, as well as other related parties. Folks, that's 30 million people possibly jumping on the CBDC train. Digital dollars seem to be the future now more than ever, especially that considering that we have uh, over 50 banks that are now exploring this trend. If you like that news, you'll also love the fact that Jamaica has also minted a CBDC, a total of 230 million Jamaican dollars, or approximately 1.5 million US dollars, will be issued to deposit-taking institutions and authorized payment service providers as part of the CBDC pilot program that ends in December of this year. The central bank has been working with Ireland-based technology firm eCurrency Mint on the project. Moving on to company announcements, we saw GreenPro Capital, Herwig's recent company of the week, announcing another partnership as part of their roadmap for a digital economy. In this case, it's with the IHTHS Corporation and the goal of this new partnership being to build the Shira Compliant Digital Finance and Economic Zone. This is sponsored by the Business Council in the BIMPEAGA region, which means that more than 1.9 billion Muslims will be able to participate in the Shira Compliant STOs, of which they already say there are already a few STOs identified for their eventual launch. Next, we have a service integration announcement between GK8 and US token issuance platforms, C Currency. GK8 is a custody platform providing wallets for security token support. GK8 is, is set to power C Currency services as the company prepares banks to digitalize traditional assets. The compliance and regulations ready platform includes what they claim is the world's only truly offline cold vault and highly scalable MPC for automatic high frequency transactions. Looks like C Currency is beefing up their platform after their recent raise of over $30 million. The newest security token 
marketplace on the block, INX, has added some key talent to its team. Jonathan Blackmer, apologize for the pronunciation, will take the lead in overseeing regulatory strategy of the firm. Don't know Jonathan? Well, he was the virtual currency chief and assistant deputy superintendent at the New York State Department of Finance, Financial Services in its research and innovation division. Furthermore, during his tenure at NYDFS, he was in charge of checking applications and supervising policy teams for regulated entities, which pursue cryptocurrency activities in New York State. A knowledgeable industry pro scooped up by INX. Congrats, guys. Moving on to our resources from last week, we saw an article on real estate tokenization by George Zurich, founder of Toronto-based Zora Management. The firm was established to source real estate investments for tokenization. And you can see why George's outlook on this is the future. An SBI out of Japan has made a public call to action. They say that firms simply can't afford to miss out on security tokens. And you're right, SBI. As one of the leading Japanese investment banks, check out their article on why, again, tokenization is the future. We have a lot of great content to check out at the Security Token Market blog. And we also have our very own Peter Gaffney's Tokenize This on Tokenized University Endowments. I mean, this guy doesn't stop coming up with cool tokenization models. So give this a read along with our Tokenize Tuesday, Token Boy Logs, and of course, my own series. And that's all I've got for you from last week. Now let's go over to John and get the latest STO and market updates. All right, Nick, let me look good. Welcome to the Security Token Offering Update portion of the show. I'm John Pittman, the Token Boy, and here goes your weekly STO update. Both of our STOs this week are German-based, showing that once again, international adoption of security tokens are well underway. To start, we have the first media house that will be globally tokenized, and they are called Wilt to Wonder. They are doing the very own security token offering that launches August 16th, Monday of this week. Now, Wilt to Wonder is known for producing high quality content such as documentaries and series, and they've been doing this for well over 25 years. This STO, which is an issuance of 25 million euros, provides institutional and qualified investors the opportunity to participate in the growing popularity and revenue growth. The token, nominated as MLT, will be trading on the Media Industry Licensing Content Platform, or MILK for short. This will provide investors with a 20% dividend on all of the company's profits. The MILK platform is the first ever blockchain-based digital content marketplace. Groundbreaking. World to Wonder has a wide audience reaching 15 million viewers per month via television channels and an additional, an additional 12 million views online. This STO is intended to expand and accelerate the TV station's growing market share. Token MLT is already tradable via decentralized exchanges such as Uniswap and PancakeSwap. Next step will be tradability on Coinbase and Binance. Our second STO will be a shipping company based in Hamburg, Germany. They're issuing out a token called the Green Ship Token. The total issuing volume of this green deal is $50 million. Institutional and private investors can get in at an investment of a minimum of thousand US dollars. The raised capital will be used to purchase bulk carriers that transport raw materials such as grain, fertilizer, coal, and forest product, all goods that form the basis of our needs. Uh, that finishes up your weekly SEO update. And now here's Keith with your market update. Let's now move right into our secondary market trading segment. As always, all news and pricing data is sourced from stomarket.com. Today, the total security token market cap is sitting at a very healthy 944 million. We're just shy of that quickly approaching 1 billion target. How cool is that? Overstock, the largest security token by market cap, is down around 3% for the week, with a token trading at $66 while maintaining a weekly volume of 400,000. After its second week of trading in the open market, the INX token has secured its place as the second largest security token by market cap. It has more than doubled since its listing price of 90 cents and is now trading at 184. The INX token has attracted significant attention in the security token space, sending its weekly trading volume to over 230,000 after only two weeks of trading. Contributing to the slower growth uh, over the week for the space was the third largest security token by market cap T0, which gained only 0.15% on the week and is trading at $6.51. It has a trading volume of 57,000 for the week. Tokenized stocks, on the other hand, they're experiencing yet another great week of high trading volumes. 
The tokenized shares are consistently proving to satisfy an appetite for investors in this space. It's outpacing the volume of traditional security tokens significantly. For instance, FTX's tokenized Grayscale Bitcoin Trust shares, the trading volume there decreased about 50% over the past week, and it still managed to pull in 3.7 million in weekly trading volume. Moderna tokenized stock shares came in second at 1.76 million in weekly trading volume on FTX. BioNTech on the aforementioned cryptocurrency exchange came in third for weekly trading volume across tokenized stocks. All of the seven highest traded tokenized stocks are being traded on FTX, with Binance clearly falling way behind in the battle for tokenized stock trading. It's been another exciting week in the markets. Always do your own research and hit me up on Twitter at KeithDLT. Send me all your hot takes. Talk soon. See you next week. And now it's time for our main topic of episode 104 of the Security Token Show, with this time the main conversation being around DeFi and the SEC. We actually had quite a riveting conversation last time about the little gray area about the crypto regulation between the CFTC and the SEC. But as we announced earlier on the show, DeFi money markets was fined uh, for actually selling unregistered securities in a DeFi platform. So this is the first time that we've ever seen the SEC officially go after a DeFi platform. So we figured we'd take the time to dive right into it with you all. So if any of you are listening and you're still a little unsure about this term DeFi, it stems from about a year, 18 months ago, and it stands for decentralized finance. And this is essentially leveraging a lot of the blockchain-based solutions that we talk about here on the show, as well that are used in the cryptocurrency industry to try to automate a lot of the traditional financial services. And so DeFi, I really think, has four main pillars. Collateralized lending, which is essentially removing the middleman from lending experiences when you have an asset and getting it from somebody else. We've got permissionless trading, like we've seen with decentralized exchanges like Uniswap that allow anyone to swap any of their different assets from any others. You have programmatic stablecoins. So this is creating stablecoins that hold value over time relative to many different factors that allow for international trade and all these kinds of settlement from lending and a lot of these different pieces. And then finally, we have automated market makers. And this is the idea of creating liquidity for these different assets by incentivizing users to participate in the protocol instead of either rely on third parties. I think you nailed it. Although even further, DeFi may expand into other aspects. But the whole point is that that decentralized part. The very fact that the idea is there is no central operator, not a company, not a person that's actually operating the platform. These are all based on blockchain solutions, leveraging smart contracts to enable a digital ecosystem for people to participate in these variety of services here that you've just pointed out, Kyle. Absolutely right. So you're essentially just taking the smart contracts, which is just automation. How do we automate the financial markets? How do we automate financial services? And that's where we start to get into some situations here, right. like with DNM, where the SEC jumps in and says there's maybe some issues. Well, if you don't like banks, then obviously you don't like regulation, and here we are. So DeFi is all about pushing the boundaries, which is why we expect that this is the first time but not the last time that the SEC is going to start getting interested in this space. In fact, uh, we've seen Gary Gensler, who's the current SEC chair and commissioner, saying that he actually thinks the DeFi markets need to be regulated. Anything with lending, anything with securities follows under their purview. So they probably will start getting a little bit more active within this space, given the fact that that they can't have so much control on what is considered a decentralized platform, which is what makes this whole thing so interesting. Yeah, and so we've seen the differences in how they try to enforce this. Certainly with more centralized parties, kind of like with DNM, where there was an executive team that could shut down the protocol at any given time, it really wasn't fully DeFi. Because what we see in the decentralized financial space is that a lot of these protocols, they you know somebody writes the code and then they launch it and they launch it without any ability to shut it down. So it starts to get into these situations where you know somebody might get in trouble. Like for example, Uniswap delisted a couple tokens that they were concerned about from a regulatory perspective from their front end. So when you go to Uniswap, you know, .com, you can't trade it. 
but the protocol that's being used by many other platforms is still able to offer the same services because Uniswap themselves cannot do anything about it. That's right, Uniswap, the company is removed from Uniswap, the DeFi protocol. And actually, Gensler, we actually just talked about this last week. There's even some issues with the CFTC most recently with their head coming out saying that Ethereum is officially you know, a commodity, not a security. This might have implications on other DeFi platforms. And so we're definitely gonna be interested in that, but go check out episode 103, our last week's episode, our main topic where we really dive into that. Yeah, it's fascinating stuff here because we've got DMM, we've seen Uniswap trying to step back, even Binance, as we've covered many times here in different episodes. Mm -hmm. Check out our main topic on Binance and what's going on. I think that's 102. And there's a lot of great things happening. But the other problem is that some, some people, including the CFTC chairman, the, the you know, from a commodities perspective, is saying that the SEC is overstepping their bounds. And so we'll have to see how these things are resolved over time. The SEC is overstepping its bounds, and meanwhile, it's asking for more. So <laughs> we'll see what happens. But we've already seen some cases where investors, if that they would be seen that way, certainly could be in a, of an issue. We had a poly network, right? They actually announced that they had a hack in their DeFi platform for over $600 million. So in this case, luckily the hackers did return the money after working with the people behind the protocol, but that shows you that this isn't necessarily a perfect science and solution, which is why, of course, the SEC is certainly very, very interested in making sure that if there are investors participating in this stuff, they are protected and they have the, the support of the SEC. And so you may be wondering, what does this all have to do with security tokens? Because DeFi is a new term, certainly it's not the DeFi show, it's the security token show. And the reality is that security tokens are really not affected by many of these clampdowns from regulatory bodies because security tokens by nature follow all necessary securities laws. We've been, in fact, as we saw in my company of the week, the SEC has actually issued a no action letter to companies that are trading security tokens mm -hmm. to allow them the flexibility to do that successfully. And even Chairman Gensler has come out and said, as long as they follow securities laws, it's all kosher. So as long as we're, we're taking these regulatory steps forward, you know, we don't have a lot of worries from our side. Yeah, so who knows what's next? We certainly think that the SEC is gonna get a little bit more active. We certainly think DeFi I will continue to push the boundaries as well as lead to new innovations that hopefully with the right partnerships and regulations in place, centralized firms can also take advantage of that. And so with that, if you have any questions or feedback or thoughts, please always reach out to us. And we apologize if we're sweating. The AC went out in the office today, but here we are anyway. We want to get you that content. And so with that, please make sure we see you again next Friday. Follow us on Twitter. Check out stomarket.com. That's where you can get all the trading information, all the news, everything you need to know about security tokens right there, including our very own blog, which has a heck of a lot of new cool content for you to go check out. Thanks to our amazing team. I hope you enjoy all of the great new people and faces that you're seeing, as well as shout out to Nick, who does all of our filming and production and we've done an amazing job. So happy tokenizing, and we'll talk to you next week. Cheers. Oh,